64,000 Americans died from drug overdoses last year. That's a 21% increase from 2015. The bulk of those reported deaths came from heroin or opioids. Yesterday, President Trump announced a public health emergency directing federal agencies to use, quote, every appropriate emergency authority to combat opioid and drug abuse. But the declaration does not directly allocate much new money for the effort. The head of the president's opioid commission says billions of dollars are needed but that it's Congress's job to find those funds. Of course, the opioid epidemic is so much more than a funding fight in Washington. Countless communities across America are being devastated by drugs. One of those places, Huntington, West Virginia. One of the films in our inaugural Meet the Press American Film Institute Film Festival follows the opioid crisis in Huntington, where the overdose rate is 10 times the national average. The film is called Heroin and it highlights three women trying to break the town's horrid cycle of drug abuse. I'm not really sure what a plateau is going to look like. You know, I see this as a countrywide problem that has the potential to bankrupt the country. You know, we conservatively estimated that Cabell County, and we're talking 96,000 people, spent probably about $100 million in health care costs associated with IV drug use in 2015. That's one small county in one small state. I don't, I can't even fathom what it's going to look like when it plateaus. But I know it will be welcomed. I'm now joined by Elaine McMillan Sheldon, the filmmaker behind Heroin, and Huntington, West Virginia Fire Chief Jan Rader, who you just saw in the clip from the film. They're joining us from the fire station in Huntington. Uh, thank you for joining me, I appreciate it. Jan, I wanna start with you. Um, yesterday, you heard the president and you heard the announcement, both what was coming and what isn't coming. And I, what is, is anything changed for you today that you feel like you have more help to deal with this problem in Huntington? Well, I, I certainly think that it's a, an important first step for us to take and the fact that there were representatives from our state and our area there behind President Trump, uh, at least there is a recognition of how bad the problem is and that we need to do more for that. Uh, some of the things that were announced yesterday are going to help us, such as Medicaid and Medicare being allowed uh, to be utilized for residents are in resident programs for mm -hmm. more than 16 beds. That's going to be a big help. Uh, but there's still so much to do. There's so many layers to this onion. Uh, but, you know, I, I welcome and support any first step and, and anything that we receive after that. Well, let's talk about, to me, it's, we, we, we're, we've got a series of baby steps that we have to do and we haven't done them yet. Elaine, Yes. what are the, baby steps that you think if every member of Congress saw this film, saw heroin, that they would be running to do immediately? What do you believe your film would motivate them to do immediately? Well, I think the film is mostly trying to create more empathy around this problem. I mean, I think that the average person may not realize how big of a problem this is, and once it hits their uh, backyard, they're going to realize it. And so the film is just adding to that conversation. Um, clearly, there needs to be more money put towards this problem. There needs to be more resources, more options, more detox beds. There's eight detox beds in the entire Cabell County area. Um, that's a bottleneck for people trying to get into treatment here so options you know you you can't you can't get yourself out of addiction without options to help yourself so uh generator do do you have if everybody in cabell county came and wanted help to well, help with detox help with uh getting off of this addiction could you handle could the community handle that today if everybody came in from the county that said i need help i, I gotta get out of this would you have the resources to treat those folks? Absolutely not. We don't have the resources to treat those who want the help. Uh, the, the red tape to get in to uh, long-term recovery is just enormous. You take somebody who is in withdrawals. They need to be detoxed before they can get into treatment. Uh, we have not enough treatment beds. We don't have enough uh, outpatient resources as well. Uh, and, you know, if somebody, 
wants to go to rehab, they have to be medically cleared and then detoxed. And, and it's such an arduous process. And uh, both hospitals here in Huntington, West Virginia are inundated. Uh, the ERs are clogged. Uh, they're overwhelmed. First responders are overwhelmed. And you know, what Elaine's film has done is shed a light and, and given people a, a first or a front row view of what we are dealing with and what first responders all around the country are dealing with. But you know, we're trying to provide hope for people who need hope to right. start the process for recovery. And when they have to wait one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks right. to get into just a local detox center, they're losing hope minute by minute. E Elaine, uh, where did you discover these drugs were coming from? I mean, obviously, there's so many ways we've got to tackle this addiction, but one is to stop the flow. Yeah, I mean, well, it started with prescription pills that started right. with legal drugs and um, you know in my hometown of Logan it was it was a common thing growing up to to see pill mills and once those got shut down you know heroin comes from many different places from Mexico um, from the Middle East and then you're seeing fentanyl being um, actually manufactured in China and Jan can talk more about the the strength of the fentanyl and how Narcan is sometimes not even you know it takes more than one dose more than two right. doses sometimes to bring someone back so it's just getting stronger it's getting um, um, people don't know what to expect sometimes with certain um, things that they're buying, right. whether it's car fentanyl or fentanyl. And so it's just, it's scary because, you know, for Jan as a first responder, they don't know what someone's overdosed on until they see those toxicology screens. And so, and that can come, you know, I don't know, weeks later. So, you know, it's hard, it's hard to get on top of things because they change so quickly. You know, uh, Chief, I was... We, we've seen all of the pictures of FEMA rushing into a Florida, rushing into a Texas, uh, rushing into a Puerto Rico. And what you two are describing and what Elaine's film shows, this is a disaster. Uh, it sounds yes. like we need a yes, FEMA-like response, that we need, you need an inundation of first responders, it sounds like. You need people from all over the country. You need beds, uh, temporary clinic beds, things like that. How do we create that mindset that, hey, this is, think of this as a tornado came in and hit thousands of communities. What would, how would the country respond? Is that the mindset we should have? I, I would love to see that mindset. And, uh, and uh, I think that films like Heroin are going to show the country that this is, this is how it is. You know, Huntington is not, necessarily ground zero. It looks like ground zero because we own the problem and we're willing to talk about it. But this is happening all over the country. This is one small county and one small state. You multiply what we spend daily, weekly, monthly on the medical cost alone from IV drug use. Uh, it, it makes way more sense to provide recovery for those suffering from substance use disorder than to continue down this road where we're probably going to bankrupt the country. Well, that's maybe if maybe if if uh, empathy doesn't motivate, maybe finance as well. Anyway, Elaine McMillan Sheldon, Chief Jan Raider, um, it's a terrific uh, and important and poignant film. Uh, thank you for making it. Heroin is just one of the 16 films that will be screened at our first ever Meet the Press Film Festival. It's in collaboration with the American Film Institute. We're pretty proud of it. It's all happening on November 13th right here in Washington, D.C. Tickets, by the way, are on sale now at NBCNews.com slash MTP Film. And we'll be right back. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.